There was a charitable gathering at which a toast was raised in your honor as a man of the people. Some people shouted in disagreement, refused to raise their glasses, and left the hall. It's this whole revolutionary fever. Too many have lost the respect for proper authority. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Citizen Genet, sir. Speak of the devil. Uh, my dear President Washington, I said, we two friends must not stand on ceremony. So, here I am to ask a private moment with you. Citizen Genet, communications of diplomatic representatives must come to the Secretary of State. Ah, Jefferson warned that the President would not receive me. But I said nonsense. Such a great man would be more magnanimous. Please. Sir. What I have to say is of highest importance, since I fear we may misunderstand each other. We can talk in my study. Only the French. The word Gaul must come from Gallic. My generous friend, I am not responsible for the enthusiastic support of France by the American people, which so alarms the government, and is an expression of your citizens' honesty and integrity. Sir. France will emerge from the current war with great glory. Meanwhile, a word from the president displaying his own generosity of spirit towards France might quiet the people's gazettes. It is of slight importance to me, sir, what is said about my administration. A free press happens to be a foundation of our form of government. Mr. President. No, I've heard you out. And as friends do not stand on ceremony, you will not mind that I return to my guest. But of course not. Indeed, Mr. President, I feel we are now much closer to a perfect understanding. No? Good day. I heard it leave. Is something wrong? I've had enough of this man. Condescending and patronizing me as if the President of the United States was some country bumpkin. <laughs> citizen secretary wish to see me. Have you not heard that I have vanquished your old man Washington with a lavish display of Gallic charm and logic? Huh? Rejoice with me, Jefferson. Our conflicts are at an end. 
Ah, yes, my dear Mr. President. What is it? Has someone died? The President and I were about to confer on a grave threat to peace. The citizen minister's presence is not required. Good day, sir. Good day, citizen secretary. My dear president. Yes. Good day. now a national emergency. Mayor Clarkson has declared the city a plague area and quarantined the sick. The panic seems to be spreading faster than the fever. Each day more and more wagon loads of people head for the country. There must be something more that I can do. For the security of the government, sir, you and your family must leave here now and not come back until the worst is over. No. Sir, the risk is too great if you remain here. No. Mr. Hamilton has now been struck down. My God. Christopher! Sir, you can't go there. Christopher, see that my horse is ready to leave immediately. Yes, sir. Mr. President, you will endanger yourself. Well, at least I will comfort Mr. Hamilton. Let's go. Richard Allen. Mr. President. I'm a Methodist preacher, sir. I pray you don't ride these streets anymore. You could catch the sickness. I understand, Reverend Allen, that you and your people have been caring for the sick when others have refused. You've gone in and out of these quarantine houses for weeks with only God to protect you. I bow to your bravery. I was afraid you'd come, sir. You are not to be admitted to the sick room. This is Hamilton. I must see him. Sir, please. Alex, I sir, tried to stop him. Name. Think of your responsibilities. Save your strength. Don't talk. If we lost you to this plague, how long do you think it would take for the government to explode into conflict? You know, the rumor is that you've grown tired of doing battle with Jefferson and you're taking the easy way out. You must fight this thing, Alex. You must. I need you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Now go. Please. I almost forgot. This is Washington. Uh, told me to give this to you for Alex. It's a bottle of canary wine, or cure-all. I don't think it could hurt him. And it might help. Thank you, Mr. President. Oh, sir. I couldn't go on living if I lost him. 
He is dearer to me than anyone in the world. I refuse to go without you. Well, consider Nellie and young Wash. I'll send the children, but I'm staying. Martha. Forgive me if I seem difficult. But if there's danger, I want us to face it together. All right. We'll pack to travel in the morning. I watch you like a hawk, ma'am. Then I practice in my room till I get it right. I'm beginning to think that you learn faster than I can teach you. Ma'am, I've, I've been wanting to say this for a long time. When Mama died of the fever and, and you took us in, I just want you to know how thankful I was and always will be. My dear Oni. Christopher! Yes, sir. It was found where you must have hidden it to be picked up the slave from Downriver who drives a grain wagon. This is your hand printing. Yes. Who is this Matty? It's my woman, sir. She belongs on the next farm down south. And the two of you are going to run away together? Yes, sir. Both going to sail away from Alexandria. If you truly love that woman, all you had to do was come to me. And I would have arranged somehow for the two of you to be together. It ain't, it ain't just being with Maddie, sir. Stay with me. And I will see that you marry your Maddie. And I promise you that in my will, if not before, I will free both of you. Can we agree on this? Yes, yes, sir. We'll say no more about it. Thank you, sir. Lemonade, dear. I'll be in the garden. Martha, I'd like to talk to you. I've decided to try and find some rational plan. Some way to free our slaves during our lifetime. With your approval, of course. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Slavery is as natural a part of our lives as breathing. George, we've always treated our people so well. Why would they even want to be free? Why? Why did we fight a war? Oh, surely it's not the same. Why isn't it? Why wouldn't Christopher yearn for his freedom? Or even Oni? Or Molly. Those girls would never want to leave us, and you know it. Why are you saying all this? My earliest memories of having been cared for by slaves. It's so sudden. So I've sensed ever since the war that you've not been happy with this way of life. Yes. 
Our good Virginia friends, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, have decided that they cannot change this system. They champion the rights of man, yet can't find it in their hearts to open the gates to their slave quarters. So if we do this thing, we would undoubtedly be opening ourselves up for more personal attacks. My greatest fear is that freeing our slaves while still president could incite a north-south conflict which could tear this nation apart. So, any such plan must be kept a secret until after I leave office. I see. What will happen to them, George? Where will they go? You know, we'll provide for the children, of course, until they're old enough to support themselves. And the old and the infirm, we should give a lifetime pension. The only immediate change would be that those who wish to continue working for us would be paid a salary. Like any free man or woman. I don't pretend to understand everything you've said. But if you believe this to be right, then it's right. And that's all I need to know. Newspapers from Maine to the Carolinas are denouncing the Neutrality Proclamation and celebrating French courage. Well, my, my friend, if you feel so strongly, did you vote in favor of the proclamation? The president desperately wants the appearance of being united, and I cannot always be the naysayer. But such a proclamation will expand executive power beyond constitutional limits. And prepares the way for a king. I voted for it to keep worse things from happening. <clears throat> Well, at least the plague has subsided. Phil. He does want peace. I didn't mean to suggest that you he know, did. I really do not relish the role of the lonely champion fighting pro-British reactionaries. I can understand that. But for you gentlemen exhorting me not to abandon the field to Hamilton, I would long since have been back home in Monticello. Forgive me if I press the issue too hard. And I very much regret I must tolerate attacks on Washington. It is regrettable but necessary. I know. I know. But our brilliant writer, Freneau, does sometimes go too far. Have you seen this, sir? The latest satire in Freneau's paper? Read it. It describes you being placed for your aristocratic crimes on the guillotine. I would rather be in my grave than in my present situation. <laughs> The personal abuse I have had to take to uphold the dignity of this office. Everyone here knows how much I wanted to retire. With vast reluctance, I stayed on. Why? So that liars like Freneau could charge me with lusting to be king. No, I would rather be on my farm. An emperor of the world. My regret at having accepted a second term will be even greater if you abandon me. If I lose you now, I could lose the South, and I must maintain a geographic balance in my family. Thomas, I can never really replace you. You know that. Don't you postpone your leaving. Stay till next autumn. Help get us through the difficulties of this year. I really... Now, wait a few days before making your final decision. Sir, I, I you really at just... least owe me that. No consideration on Earth can change my mind. I cannot support policies I do not agree with just to keep peace in your family, sir. It's immoral. We'd best be on our way. Mr. Jefferson. We have had our differences, but I still hold the highest opinion of your integrity and talents. You will always have my prayers for your happiness.
I just returned from Mount Vernon, and Mr. Randolph told me about Samuel. I... Uh, I wish I could have been here sooner. I'm so very sorry. He compromised with my fears by bringing me here outside the city. But he would ride into his business. On one of his trips, he was stricken. Instead of comforting him myself, I sent a servant daily to see how he was. And then one day, he was no more. Now I can never forgive myself for my cowardice. People say that I shed crocodile tears at his burial. That I cared not a fig for Samuel. Everyone thinks ill of me. No, I wish I were dead too. Because I should have been there with him. I should have been there with him. I don't think ill of you. We know government. who you are, Mr. Tax Collector. You're out here from that damn government in Philadelphia. Well, you've picked the pocket of the last farmer in these parts. Patrick, you can't go against the law. He's an agent of that devil, Hamilton, and he's going against our law, the law of survival. We work from dark to dark around here, mister. And when we harvest our wheat and rye, there ain't no way we can get it back across those mountains for cash, less than we turn it into rye whiskey first. And now you come out here demanding we pay you and Hamilton for the privilege? Well, sir, you're going to make us pay in blood first. Take off that wig and pour on the tar. Ah! A warning to any other rich distiller of what'll happen if he pays that tax like this bastard did. Please, for God's sake! Oh, you've already burned a still. A still you can rebuild. This he ain't never gonna forget. Stealing the bread off our tables with that damnable whiskey tax. 
Now he's spilling the blood of decent family men. It's time to give him a dose of our justice. Listen, listen to me. I'm as mad as you are. But we can't take the law into our own hands. You with us now, Eben, or against us? With you, damn it. But we don't shoot first. Jeremiah, you still our captain? Hell, we're in this together to the end. Yeah. Even is right. No bloodshed lest they start it. All we want is devil brought to justice. Yeah. Hold your rights, men. Be in line. George, wait a minute. He's not here. I order you men to disband. We intend to make a citizen's arrest. This is an illegal armed force. You're here in violation of the law. To hell with your law! I tell you, Neville left an hour ago. He left here on horseback. Liar! Come on! No! Men! He's a major in the army! Maybe he's telling the truth. He's lying in his teeth. He's got Neville in there. Let's go get him! No! <laughs> oh! A magnificent animal. Strong forelegs make a great jumper. <laughs> I'd buy him. If the price weren't so high. Whoa there. Whoa. Mr. President, there's been an uprising on the Pennsylvania frontier. Farmers are in rebellion against the whiskey tax. Men have been killed. My God. These rebels have uh, united to make a formidable army. They've tried to draw Virginia into the revolt. Next down the mountain chain is Kentucky. Who knows where to land? Made every effort to right their grievances. We cannot let these rebels defy us, Mr. President, or the nation will fall apart. What's the purpose of becoming a nation if the people don't support their own laws? Too many of our people lack faith in the central government. <sighs> yes, but how can we build faith if the laws are not enforced? Federal commissioners must be sent empowered to grant amnesty if they stop now. What if they refuse? <sighs> I'll raise an army against them. I tell you, Mrs. Hamilton, if the president makes me second in command by sending our commissioners packing, the rebels will be forced to act. This could be it. The conflict that will prove the need for a powerful government. What's the matter, Dad? I don't want you to go. You have so many enemies who would end your career, even your life. If anything should happen to you... Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. It's you I worry about, and the new little one. This rebellion must be crushed. Or the United States will be no more. Alex, I'll miss you so much. 